All right, here we are. I didn't film the start as usual. Uh, what I'm doing today is swapping out the coils. So remove the battery. And it looks like it's gonna have to be modified straight out of the packet. So it's what's unusual about that. Battery died, so the essential thing here is to always have the power cord ready. Right, so what we've done is we've removed the battery, removed the coil packs. It's on a bracket here, one, two, three bolts holding that in. And this left one is an earth on my one. I don't know whether that's OEM or not. Let's get a look at this cup holder here. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. Um, back to this. Now, interesting thing, you'll see that that uh, coil is nice and uh, gold colored in there, or yeah, gold colored, we'll call it that. Look at the next one, black. And the other one, black. So um, could it be that one of these coils was not, or two of them were not uh, functioning quite as well? One was replaced, the other two were not. Um, don't know. I've got these three from Yahoo Auction. Who knows if they're any better, but we'll give it a shot. Let's have a look inside here. Oh, it's very uh, coppery in there, or goldy in there, so that's nice. That one's super nice as well. And that one might be the nicest of the three. Um, could it be that these just needed cleaning? Who knows? But um, I'm just going to get rid of them for the minute and see if this makes it better. I don't think I'll even put the bracket in. I'm just going to plug them in, although they might earth through the bracket. I don't know. That's quite possible, so I might have to do that. Yeah, I better bolt them in. Shit, okay, that's gonna take more time. All right, okay, let's do that. In other countries, you might have ice cream trucks. Well, we have a uh, kerosene truck. Yep, this guy drives around the streets and sells kerosene. At the moment, he's selling 18 liters. Uh, sen ropyoku hachiju en for your kerosene stove that you have in your house because uh, that's how we heat houses in Japan. Yep. Clean toyu. Now that we've explained what that noise is, let's get to this. I really would like to swap these out one at a time, but I want to get the thing working and then we'll work backwards, I think. Swap in a bad one, like swap these back in and um, see if it becomes worse. Oops, well that one's broken now, just thrown it. Um, so we go that way, like that. I don't think these are numbered, so it won't matter which one's which. The other interesting thing, or cool thing, is that these these leads... Oh wait, we can have a look at the truck. Yo. Right, that was exciting. I hope, I really, really hope this is the problem. So much I hope this is the problem. I mean, that doesn't look like... It's, it's quite dirty in there, and I don't think that would provide a good connection. I was talking about the leads, that's right. Um, so these are, these actually have dates on them. These are 2009 written on here. This is 2010 on this one. And this one is 2009 as well. So one of them was replaced. I've got brand new plugs in there. I've got updated leads. They're not new leads, but they are newer than what were in it. And these ones are newer again. So we've upgraded the whole system. These were uh, 50 bucks, so not bad, considering that normally one of these goes for 30 um, on Yahoo Auction. May as well buy three for 50. He, the uh, previous owner, did say that they were running in a they were in a car that was running fine. Believe that or not, believe it or not, don't know. If I had more time today, I would uh, sandblast this and paint it. But um, let's just get it working first. We can do that another day. Right, we've done that. We need to bolt this back in and then try it. 
that can go in there first. Do they even plug in? They do! That is good. That's a good start. Okay. I hope this was it. I really do. Because I am out of ideas. Took the car to Suzuki and they didn't know what the hell the problem was. I kind of wish I could do this without putting the battery back in, but that's not really possible. Okay, that's tight. Ah, crap. If you have one of these, the uh, single cam turbo, if you have one, truck or van, uh, let me know whether this earth goes from here to the crank angle sensor or not, because I actually don't know. I could check the manuals, but man, where's the fun in that? Mine didn't before. It used to go from there down to the uh, exhaust manifold uh, shroud, which I thought was very bizarre. Three, two, one. This is going to run very badly if I'm incorrect. I do like the fact that I can like straight up slam dunk this battery. One advantage to driving a K car is the battery weighs absolutely sweet f all. Right, we're gonna get that on there. Good. It's a good idea to always do these up, even if even if you do, even if it's just something temporary like what I'm doing. This isn't gonna stay like this. I'll have to pull the battery out again, but I just want to test it. Do I have to pull the battery out again? Maybe not. Anyway, so that's tight, that's tight. Let's give it a go. The thing that makes this problem so difficult is that it's intermittent. It doesn't always do it. And I'm not talking just about the, um, the air-fuel ratio going to the moon and back temporarily. It will also hunt sometimes as well. Uh, the hunting is from what I understand is either caused by a vacuum leak, which I've replaced all of the vacuum lines, so unless the sensor is leaking internally, it's probably not that, or the fuel isn't being um, combusted, isn't being burned properly, and that would point to the coil, the plugs. Plugs are new, coils have now been replaced. Let's see what happens. at the AFR gauge. Oh, it's dropping. Here it goes. Yeah, it went to the moon again. No, so that didn't fix it. That did not fix it. We're sitting still still doing that stupid shit. So that didn't fix it. That is disappointing. Alright, let's change the leads too, just because. Is it running better though? Could be. How would you know? Let's try it. Let's try it again. You can watch it this time. Oh, it started on 15.2. That's a bit weird. Now I don't think it's going to do it this time. No, 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 no. And there you go, perfect example of it being intermittent. Doesn't always do the same thing. Let's, um, let's swap the leads for the newer ones anyway, just because, and then maybe that'll give it a chance to um, reset itself and do its thing again. Who knows? Let's try, th three times a charm. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll do it again. Intermittent problems are always the worst. They're the hardest ones to diagnose. Let's go to the moon, baby. Or not. Not would be good. Started on 14.2. Oh, we're dropping. Normally when we drop, we shoot up. Yeah, there we go. And it's on camera. There it is. The intermittent problem of my AFR. 
So there you go. Dunno, still dunno. Let's swap the leads. Although I don't think that's going to do anything. Imagine having to remove the battery to change your leads. Only Suzuki would do something so f***ing stupid. Really. Like, why didn't they move that back there and then move this further forward? Or, I don't know, coil on plug? It's probably just going to be quicker to remove the battery, isn't it? Now this could be... It could be the wiring harness. It could be. It could also be the uh, engine computer. So I'll try both of those next. Could also be the alternator still, although that would be surprising. So we're getting, getting rid of this one. Come on, biatch. Right. So this is from 2001. This is from 2009. So we're going for a newer lead. I mean, it probably won't make a shit of difference, but you never know. You just, you just never know. I wonder if I've got the firing order incorrect. Um, that is also from 2001. And this one. Come on, come out of there. Come on. I don't have to tell you, but this, this rocker cover's f***ing hot. Oh, okay. Just scratched the shit out of myself. The only one we can really be sure of is that this one's number two. Right? That's got to be one or three. And that one's got to be one or three. So um, I'm going to try different combinations and see what the engine does. That's also 2001, by the way. So, now I'm sure that the, uh, well, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that the number one cylinder is at the front of the engine. So, like most cars. This is also, this is 2009, this lead. All right, that seems to be, seems to be no, no, number two, yep. So we're gonna connect number two up. Number two can go here. <clears throat> this is actually an interesting experiment. I've never tried this before. Um, this will probably run like crap. So before we had it one, two, three. No, we didn't. Now we're going to have it one, two, three. And just see what happens. What's the worst can happen? It um, blows up. This is number three. This is from... Uh, 2010. I mean, they're 10 year old leads. Jesus. Why am I even bothering? Because I'm cheap. That is why. Okay, one, two, three, switched. Slam dunk this back in here real quick. Real quick. Get you back on. I'm gonna need a tenner. The old tenner. Guy across the street has um, the same model van, but in a NA and the Mazda version. So when he starts it up, it sounds exactly the same as the silver van. Okay, so we've we've gone one, two, three, and we've gone one, two, three on the coils. Before they were one, two, three on the coils. If I recall correctly Ugh. now question is what's it gonna do let's grab our AFR can you see that I think you can here we go it's running it's sitting on 14.6 I reckon it's gonna skyrocket here we go, it's going down. And we're going to the moon. Yay, the moon! Okay, alright, so it's still doing it. Let's switch those and see what happens. Now the question is, is it actually possible to switch them while it's, um, while they're in the car? Maybe. While the battery's in here. Ugh. Okay, that one's out. That one's out. Well, that's interesting. This, do this one 
doesn't reach the far one around the battery. So that's kind of idiot proof, isn't it? You can't wire it up wrong. That's kind of cool. They've made this one, this is so short that it won't reach. You can't actually plug it in incorrectly. So we can be sure that this one is actually going to the correct one because it won't reach the closer one. Oh, getting this back in is going to suck. Ah. Well, I do not recommend this. Just straight up pull the battery out because this sucks. Actually, right-handed down there isn't that bad. Okay, all right. Let's um. Okay, connect this up. Maybe the ECU's memory is remembering that it was f***ed up and uh, it hasn't reset itself yet. Who knows? Maybe you need to leave the battery disconnected longer. Because I have heard that these ECUs do have a memory, unlike the Cappuccino, which does not have an, a memory. The Alto has no memory either. There might not have been anything wrong with the coils that I had. That's the sad part about this. I'm not going to know. Uh, whether that's done anything at all for quite a few drives because it's intermittent. As I said, it's not just the AFR flipping back and forward that's the problem. It, it doesn't idle well sometimes. So there's that too. Anyway, we've done what we set out to do, which was change the coils over. That has been accomplished. Uh, so let's put the battery uh, bracket back in tighten everything up properly and then go for a drive I suppose that was a bit dangerous Did you see that I nearly launched the uh, the bracket onto the positive terminal that's why it's always a good idea to put your bracket in before you connect your terminals up so you don't um, end up causing sparks Always using a ratchet spanner. If you're wondering what these are, these three, this one goes to the dashboard for an extra earth, uh, the dash support bar. Um, I thought I had an earthing problem. Turns out I don't, but uh, that's staying there because it's already there. This one goes to the, uh, the intake manifold and the gearbox. This one goes to the alternator and there's another line floating over there that I'll connect to the starter motor when I've got a minute. Right, that's done. So that's the best we can do today. Hopefully that just uh, the ECU is a memory issue and it fixes itself. But uh, I'm not holding my breath for that. Done. A perfect example of keeping it real and showing you exactly what's going on. I got confused and thought I had the leads plugged in around the wrong way. No, you can't do that. And I discovered that on camera. Now, I could have cut that out, made it all nice, and made it look like I knew what I was doing, but that's not what happened. So, um, yeah, that's it. And that is the end of this episode. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Is that aerial falling off? No. Bit of wood has, though. Just notice a piece of wood has fallen off the house across the street. I call it Jumanji because it's covered in vines and shit and there's animals living in it. Weird noises come out of there. It's pretty creepy. Uh, Ryan calls it Python Manor. Pretty funny. Um, strong wind makes bits of it fall apart. Kind of frightening. Yeah. Um, yeah what was I saying? Yeah, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you'd like to see what happens next, subscribe. Do me a favor and tell someone about the channel. As one of my favorite channel's uh, hosts... Is that, what you, is that what you say? Am I a host of this channel? Or am I just creator? I don't know what you'd call it. Um, as someone I know on YouTube says, help good people watch good videos. So, um, yeah, do that. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do that by getting your name on the Garage K door. I know I say that in every episode, and it probably seems like it's um, a script or something. It just sort of rolls off the tongue now. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do that by getting your name on the Garage K door. Details on how to do that are in the description. Um, yeah.
there's still some space on there so if you'd like to get your get your name or or something on that door that can be done there's three stickers i still haven't made yet i think there's three let me check oh wait no i have to open this to do that because i have a spreadsheet because my memory's garbage there it is i have to make one for agent smith uh agent smith one two one three I have to make one for Rude, and I have to make one for Kapi Kaiju. Um, so yeah, three stickers to go on the door. I haven't made one for Mason yet either, but I don't think he watches this, so he's not even going to know. So that's four stickers I have to make. Um, yeah, I'll get them done as soon as possible. Um, yeah, anyway, that's it. That's the end of this one. I'll see you in the next one. Later.